Giotto, continuing reviewing the entire Bible Man series because I want to. And today we're looking at the first traditional Bible Man episode. So let's not dilly daddle and begin the review. So the episode begins with the Torah of the Bat, I mean Bible Cave, which is filled with chemicals that looks like they're going to explode any second, and the computer having a map of the city. So the Dark Knight ripped off the Vile Knight on surveillance technology. Oh great, looks like the disc is scratched. Hold on. That was intentional? Miles Peterson. Dude, origin story for Bible Man is totally awesome! Miserable, alone, his spirit beaten, Miles uh. Peterson gave up. <laughs> then in his darkest hour, the words of a single book be- Uh, how did the Bible get into these dirt roads? It's not like there's this guy who walks around on these trails hiding Bibles in case people who will randomly show up in the middle of the rainstorm and crying out for something because they are very depressed. Inspired by the word of God and equipped with unyielding faith, Miles pledged to fight evil in the name of God. Okay, one. How does he know that there are forces of evil exist in this reality before this encounter? Two. Why him? According to this intro, he's a new believer. Wouldn't it be better to find somebody who's more mature in his face, like, I don't know, a pastor, a children's minister, or a youth pastor, to combat these dark forces? Three, I just spoke in Christianese. Gosh dang it! We get to the theme song, which is catchy for a kid's show, and it give us all the names for the kid characters. That'll be so memorable that we have to be reminded about their names. After that, we follow Ashley on her bike. Where is the rest of the crew? Well, they're rehearsing for a concert. Thank you, Gumber! They're about to sing! We have made a decided choice to listen to the Savior's oh. voice. The songs are actually quite horrible. After the song, Ashley finally arrives, when we get introduced to our villain of the episode, who is hiding behind a tree. Okay, first nobody noticed a blue nerd wearing a pink shirt on my first Bible Man review, and now this guy? Do they have like the best stealth stats, or does everybody else roll a natural one all the time? This is the Fibbler. His main gimmick is that he plays into the demon stereotype of suggesting his victims little lies, while acting totally goofy. Anyways, the rest of the group confronts Ashley for... Yeah, Ashley, that's been the third time this week. Wait, the youth group shows up more than three times a week? I'm actually surprised. For a minute, I thought they were actually having a social life other than the youth group. How does he do that? Bible Man resolves the current conflict between the kids when his Bible sense is tingling about the fiddler nearby. After some words of encouragement, he teleports away just in time for the meeting to end, but not before Ryan asks Ashley to do something. Could you be responsible for bringing half the music? Huh? Well, yeah, that way we could you know, kind of be a team. And it conveniently gives me more time to play Doom behind my parents' back. I told them that it's a Christian game. Seriously, you kill demons. So Ashley accepts the offer to enable Ryan's sin of slothfulness, which will totally end well for everybody, right? The Fibbler then starts to defining narcissism, which ends with a time skip to, you probably guessed it, another song. Yeah, that works. Well, let's hope the concert people get the music before the event so that if Ashley proved to be as competent as an early middle schooler, they would have an... The um, audio technician needs the other musical set for the show. Stupid. Stupid. How do you spell stupid? So because of stupidity and management, the laziness of Ryan, and Ashley being competent as a middle schooler, the event gets cancelled. 
but not without the fiddler acting like he's having imaginary audience syndrome. Much like I'm doing right now. I seriously need more friends. While the fiddler is leaving the building, while at the same time showing how bad the makeup is at close range, Bomba Man rolled a natty 20 on perception and detects the fiddler. They end up having a fight on the front porch at the church, which shows A, how the fiddler is incompetent as a fighter, and B, where Bomba Man stores his lightsaber. The fighting, while better than having almost none in the previous two episodes, and the laser baseball in future ones, is still very basic and too slow to be exciting, but it's entertaining because of the banter between Bible Man and the Fiddler, which will be a staple of the good Bible Man episodes. Bible Man! Bible Man! Pastor Greg says he needs your help. Ashley quit the group, and this whole thing's a huge mess. Which is totally the right thing in this scenario, because it was her who screwed up, even though it was Ryan who was slacking off, and the church didn't have one extra copy. Yeah, it's totally her fault. Back at Eagle Gate. Miles uses the power of 90s internet searches to find the identity of the Fiddler, which leaves one of the most hilarious sections of the video because of all the names and costumes to the various villains that look like there was a costume party in the middle of the production. The next day, the youth group is debating what to do, while Ricky is giving the audience evidence that he's a Zitzbengla. Miles enters the classroom to prepare for his class while finding out what's wrong with the youth group. Then he transforms into an overly sappy 90s song. Afterwards, Bible Man meets up with Ashley to give the lesson of the episode. And boy, it needs some unpacking. Well, are you ready for the good news? Yeah. Paul goes on to say, Thank God that Jesus Christ will rescue me. Romans 7.25 I recommend you read the book of Romans to get a better understanding of that verse in the proper context because explaining it would take a very long summer series to do and frankly, I don't have time. And in 1 John 1, 9, it says that if we confess our sins to God, he can always be trusted to forgive us and to take our sins away. Now, this is the part where I can explain what's wrong with this teaching. But in order to do that, we need to go to the thinking couch. Now we're on the thinking couch. Let me talk about stuff that's in the Bible. So the episode states that if you sin, you just have to ask Christ to forgive you and you'll be forgiven. While that's true, there's more to it than that. You see, we as Christians have the power to say no to sin through the power of the Holy Spirit, the third member of the Trinity. Sure, we'll fail because we have a sinful nature that is at war with our spiritual nature that loves Jesus. And this episode could easily address that by talking about the battle for righteousness. But instead, they went the easy route that can be easily misinterpreted as lowering the standards of Christianity, which the Bible definitely is against. So after giving a subpar lesson of regeneration, Ashley asks the group for forgiveness, which of course they accept, but not after we find out the Fibbler's goal. What a sad looking group of kitties. Hardly a glimmer of joy in the place. Perfect. One down, four to go. Seriously? That's your plan? Your plan was to take down five hormonal-filled, back-talking, sugar-loving, and click-making middle schoolers. Well, let's hope that's the dumbest plan of the series, because that means it's all up here from here. Oh, wait. Well, the Fibbler is promising to teach Ashley how to be evil, because that's totally not hard to pull off. Bible Man shows up and confronts him. One biblically banter sword fight later, the Fibbler shows how incompetent he is by killing himself by complete accident. The episode ends with Miles thanking God and giving one last look at the Bible cave. And that's the six lies of the Fibbler. Final opinion? 
it's okay. The episode definitely shows that they were trying to improve the quality. The songs are terrible and are about stuff in the Bible. The villain is more present in the episode while at the same time being entertaining. There's actual sword fighting and the dialogue between the combatants is very charming. That being said, the kids acting is still an issue and the conflict is full of contrivances along with the message not being very strong for a kid show because it only explores half of the message. But these issues, comparatively, are very harmless and it's still worth at least one viewing. I'm the Holy Ninja, and next Bible Man review, I'll explain the biggest problem with the youth group portrayal in the series. 